James Kaufman, World News Report today, March 9th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in a geomagnetic storm now for almost two straight days, which is amazing. This geomagnetic storm is being attributed to the coronal hole that was Earth-facing. Now, we were expecting some solar winds up to about 700 kilometers per second. What we weren't expecting is plasma. And we are seeing plasma hit Earth as well. Now, let's go through real quickly the KP indexes, and then we'll take a look at some specifics. Starting out with the Boulder KP index. It looks like yesterday... We had 12 hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by today, we've seen 9 hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, and and 3 hours of a KP6G2 geomagnetic storm. Moving to our Fredericksburg index, yesterday we saw the last few hours from 4 to 7 central time here in the U.S., a geomagnetic disturbance. Today we've seen nine hours of geomagnetic disturbance and three hours of a geomagnetic storm to G1 KP5 geomagnetic storm. Moving to our estimated planetary index, the exclusive KP index used by NASA and NOAA that has been upgraded this year. Yesterday we saw three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance followed by six hours of a geomagnetic storm, say G1 geomagnetic storm, and into today, we started the day with a G1 KP5 geomagnetic storm, followed by a G2, G2 KP6, really KP5.67 geomagnetic storm, followed by three more hours of a geomagnetic disturbance popping back up to a G2 KP 5.67 geomagnetic storm and then currently we're in a geomagnetic disturbance. So all in all thus far over the last 24 hours on our estimated planetary KP index we've had 9 hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, 9 hours of a G1 KP 5 geomagnetic storm and six hours of a G2 KP 5.67 geomagnetic storm. Now this is a very big deal considering we only had a coronal hole earth facing and have seen no significant solar flares in days and I will show you that in just a moment. Yes we were expecting solar winds of about 700 kilometers Per second, as you might see in one of my earlier reports, that was a great estimate. That's right about where we got to. But we're also seeing some plasma, some heavy plasma hit Earth. It's pretty hard to understand where that came from. Now, next we have our college KP index. We started yesterday with six hours of a G1 KP5 geomagnetic storm. That was followed by, well, the last six hours yesterday. And that was going to be from 1 to 7 of a geomagnetic disturbance. 1 to 7 central time here in the U.S. Now, we started the day off really last night from 7 to 10 central time with a geomagnetic disturbance into a geomagnetic storm. That's going to be a G1 KP5 back to a geomagnetic disturbance, and then into a, yes, KP7G3 geomagnetic storm. We're currently in a KP6G2 geomagnetic storm. Now, this is a lot to handle based on what we thought we were dealing with. We thought we'd see an increase in solar winds up to about 700 kilometers per second, and we were looking for a G1 geomagnetic storm, but for, well, a much shorter period of time 
and much less intense. All right, taking a look at the estimated planetary KP index, just a larger version. We started out here with a geomagnetic disturbance yesterday, and we ended the day with six hours of a geomagnetic storm of 4.67 G1. Started the day off in the same situation, a 4.67 G1 geomagnetic storm. And we moved into a G2 geomagnetic storm, back to a geomagnetic disturbance, back to a geomagnetic storm, back to a geomagnetic disturbance. And for the last three hours, we've finally moved out of a disturbance, it looks like. It's our estimated planetary KP index. And for those of y'all that don't understand this, this kind of gives you a combination of the solar winds and plasma pounding Earth at any given three-hour period. All right, taking a look at GOES 16 Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. The reason all this is such a big deal is because this is the coral hole that supposedly caused all of these geomagnetic disturbances and storms. It was definitely Earth-facing, but was not particularly large. Now we have several sunspots coming around the limb here, and we'll take a quick look at those in just a moment. We also have another coronal hole that's now Earth-facing, so we should expect more solar winds here in about 40 hours. Headed over to Ghost X-ray Flux, trying to see if maybe there was a solar flare that slipped through that might be causing some of this geomagnetic disturbances and storms. We don't really see a flare that slipped through. We have two M1 solar flares. Now the latest one was just too recent to be involved in what we're seeing go on now. It might have well been earth facing. It might have lifted a CME up off the solar disk, but it surely wasn't involved in what we've seen over the last 20 to 40 hours. Headed over to HMI Intensigram. These are the three sunspots that are coming around the limb here. They look like they could definitely grow in complexity. Uh, we have a total of five sunspot groups earth facing. Not much activity for our solar maximum that we're supposed to be in. Uh, we do have a one sunspot that's beta gamma. The rest of them are simple sunspots. 41.2, AR 41.2, is the sunspot group that actually created the last M flare that we saw just two days ago. Uh, we don't really see anything here that should startle us whatsoever. Heading over to discover real-time solar winds. We'll take a look and we'll see that our shields are now up. They were down for a bit, and I thought that may be helping all the geomagnetic storms and disturbances, but they've been up all day. We have plasma that seems to dwindle right here into 66.35. And we see that several places. There's 36.82. Here's some up at 80.26. We have one higher than that. Uh, very hard to give an excuse for why we have all these plasma spikes here. Regularly, plasma's down here running at 1 to 2 centimeters cubed. I thought maybe we had something occurring from the opposite side of the sun. But I really did not see that when I looked. Solar winds, well, they started at 500. They have been up as high as, I'd say about 700 there. 704, I think we pretty much guesstimated that perfectly. And we've seen another bump up maybe here into that 703 range. So we pretty much nailed the solar winds, but 700 kilometer per second winds causing all of the havoc that we've seen, hard to believe. Taking a look at the temperatures, they're not moving along with plasma, they're not moving along with 
anything but they are very elevated here i guess they do pop up here but plasma really pops up here where the temperatures are lower so they're not corresponding with plasma as they should although they are very elevated and to check our work here take a look at ace real-time space weather or other space weather satellite we see what do we see here we see some of these plasma marks moving up and above 100 centimeters cubed it almost looks like uh well identically what we saw on discovery here all this plasma through here that is hard to explain since we had no nothing whatsoever solar flare wise this should all be solar winds from the coronal hole and the solar winds really never got very intense like we said they broke 700 kilometers per second a few times that was it and we saw a kp7 g3 geomagnetic storm hard to put together here we must be losing our atmosphere it's the only thing that can be happening here and look at the elevated temperatures here even harder to explain that's usually moving with plasma though we have elevated plasma and no solar flare god bless you and yours folks please share please subscribe always remember anything's possible bizarro world